talk about raking and not the leaves, the strings. Some people overdo raking, some people don't do raking enough. I do it perfectly. I'm just kidding, I definitely rake more than I should, but the reason I like to do that is because once you perfect this technique, it's like when you learn how to sweep pick or something. All you do is sweep pick and it takes a little while to dial it back and, and I have to confess it's still something that I work on to this day. I don't like to overdo the raking with every single bend and slamming on the note because I feel like it affects the dynamics of your playing if you're constantly on 10 out of 10 with the, uh, the raking spectrum. And I can name a couple guitar players who are also on the high end of that spectrum. John Mayer comes to mind, Stevie Ray Vaughan, of course, before him. It's not just limited to blues players, but it's more distinct when you have this kind of bluesy clean sound or slightly overdriven sound as opposed to a super high gain sound. So that's why I have a clean tone today so I can really emphasize the rake and show you guys how this technique works if you don't already employ it in your playing. So I'm gonna show you two different kinds of rakes today, the upstroke and the downstroke. There's multiple notes you can throw it into. The downstroke is the one you should start with if you've never tried raking strings before. Just like sweet picking, it's a lot easier to go down than up. So build up your confidence with this technique going down and then try the upward rake that I'll show you a little bit later after you've got the downward rake perfect. So this is kind of like an extension of palm muting, really. Let's say I'm going to rake this string right here, the 12th fret of the B string. What you're gonna do with your right hand is make sure the meat of your hand is on all of the strings except that B string. So, what it's gonna sound like is that is the technique. And once you perfect that, you can work on bending this note. So that's it, that's the down-picked rake. Of course, there's many different variations to that after you have the basic technique down, you know, I showed you a bend, you can do a bend, you can do a pull-off, hammer-on, whatever. As long as you mute every single string except the one that you want to sound out, then you can do really whatever you want to. So now let's go over the upward rake. Same exact concept here, muting the strings underneath the one that you actually want to sound. And I'm muting it very lightly. Let me see if I can zoom it in here for you. So if you notice here, I'm really doing most of the muting with my index finger. The right hand is kind of just hovering, not doing much muting like the downstroke. So the upstroke, you're gonna rely on your finger for the muting of the bottom strings. So here's where it gets a little fancy. I can actually play notes in a scale while I'm raking down them to get this really bluesy effect and let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say I have the ninth fret of the A string and I want to uprake that. So what I'm going to do is actually pull and hammer notes of this minor pentatonic scale as I'm raking down to my destination. So what that looks like in action is
So that's raking in a nutshell. Uh, there's many more things you can do with it as always with these vlogs. I just kind of give you a taste of what a technique is like and then I leave it up to you to explore how you want to integrate it into your playing. But that's how I like to use it. That's how a lot of my favorite guitar players use raking. It's a really awesome technique and it can be extremely dynamic, but like I said, it's important to mix it into your playing and don't rake every single note or else it loses its effectiveness like any, any technique. If you do it too much, it won't sound as awesome when you do perform it. So I'm gonna do a tiny little improv here using raking and non-raking as best as I can. 